This is the Unscripted Podcast. All right, what is happening? Three weeks in the making. Three weeks in the making. Here we are. November 5th, 2020. What are you fooling with your phone for? Huh? I'm checking the date. Make sure. <laughs> Twinkie Twinkie. I'm still making sure we're still in 2020. I'm going to turn down my volume on mine because as soon as I say that, mine's going to start. Burp, burp, burp. Craziness. We're glad you tuned in. Uh, it's two days after after the election and still don't have a president. I saw somebody put a post on Facebook said if we can get the people that work the Chick-fil-A drive through <laughs> They've done out of the, counted, what they? They have them counted by 930 that night. <laughs> Probably trust them even more, too. You're right, I know. I think that's something. Yeah, lots of craziness going on. Uh, and so we, we titled today's lesson is What Colors Are You True To? And so today we're we're talking about politics, but we're not going to get political, so to speak. You know, the, I mean, there's, there's always these things you're not supposed to talk about, right? <laughs> what is it, like religion, politics, and... What, SEC football? I don't know. I can't figure it out. Oh, we talk about SEC football. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, we talk about all those things. But there's the there's the things you're not supposed to talk about, right? And and the reason why we say that, it's not like it's a a bad word. But what it does is it just causes so much trouble. Yeah, there's lots of division. Politics do that. You say that all the time and um and that's and that's so true and, and so whether you whether you voted blue or red yesterday, we're, we're really not concerned with that on this podcast. It's uh, certainly we we're we're both very patriotic people. Um, we love America, and we want what's best for it. As far as uh, but but we don't want to point you to the blue or the red. We want to point you to the to the crimson colors. Not Tuscaloosa. Not Tuscaloosa. <laughs> we want to point you to the blood of Jesus. And and you know, there's nothing in the world wrong with. Being patriotic. Right. I mean, you know, Paul in Romans 10, he said, Brethren, my my heart's desire to Israel is that, let's see here, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. And and, and it's what he wants. I mean, but he it's not like he was just wanting Israel to be saved. I mean, he, had, he was essentially writing to a Gentile church when he's doing this. But what he's doing is he, you can you can you can feel you know his his roots, right? You know you can feel those things bubbling up in him, and there's nothing in the world wrong with doing. I mean, being patriotic for your nation. Oh, absolutely. And you know, I, I look out across everything that's that's happened on election day, and um, you know, the fact that we can stand in a peaceful line with people we agree and disagree with, and we can we can cast a vote for our leaders. You know, democracy on its worst day is better than anything else in the world. Amen. I mean, and so you know we, you know, we live in the best place in the world. Amen. And you know, even though you may not like which whichever outcome, I mean, it hadn't even had an outcome yet, right? Whichever outcome it it happens, you may not like it, but you got to participate in it. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's a lot of places they just say, "No, that's what we're going to do." Yep, and, and that's right, and. I think that they should improve it a lot. I mean, can you imagine driving through Chick Fil A and being able to vote, and you get a chicken sandwich and a milkshake on the Spicy way? Spicy chicken sandwich and cookies and cream. Yeah, well, whatever you want. I mean, yeah, yeah. they would speed that lineup so much <laughs> that, that they could still take whatever milkshake you order you wanted to and let you vote. Yes. Yeah. It, yeah that's that's just the thing is that you know I mean l- let's face it. You know, the reason why this whole thing, I mean, like, I, I saw somewhere that this is one of the most voted in elections that we've had. Mm-hmm. And probably, yeah, y- yeah it, it probably because, you know, number one, we've all been cooped up. Mm-hmm. We've all got to sit around and listen to the news, feed us what we needed to have. We've all sit around and and we hadn't had anything to do, so we can just get hyped up about nothing. Right. And all this has done is provided a perfect platform for us to fuss and be mad at each other over. That's right. Well, that and there was people who were voting who lived in the eighteen hundreds too. So, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, a friend of mine, brother in the church, said uh, he said uh, this is the most uh, uh, attended or or you know utilized election, and most of them were still alive that voted. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah. I mean, but but ultimately, you know the the blessing of it is is this. 
God raised up Pharaoh. Mm-hmm. He raised up Pharaoh. So and, that he could show his power. So he could show his power. And, you know, Paul writes these letters. I mean, this we just quoted this Roman letter. And, you know, we talk about this party being moral and that party and this and that and the other. And, and there's certainly some trueness to those things. Mm-hmm. But Paul writes this letter to the Romans. In Romans 1, it deals with this, you know, this abhorredly homosexual problem that was so prevalent in the Roman world. And Paul writes this, and a dozen of the uh, the Caesars were homosexuals. Mm-hmm. We haven't had that yet. I mean, it's, it's, it'll probably happen at some point. But, you know, we think like it's so bad for us right now, and, and the gospel thrived. Yeah. I mean, it just it just thrived. God, God looked at that time and said, you know, Romans 5 and verse 6, and while we were yet without strength in due time. Christ died for us. Christ died for us. You know, Galatians 4 and verse 4, in the fullness of time, Christ came, born of a woman, born under the law. I mean, it was, the, it was the full, you know, the complete. Yeah, the full, the right, at the right time, God sent forth the Son. Yes. And it wasn't like it was just, oh, well. I think this year is going to be good. I think I'm going to send Jesus. Let's try it. Yeah. No, let's try it now, was, son. Go ahead. Yeah. All right. Ready, 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 ready. One, two, three, break. I think they're ready to go. Yeah, right. No, I mean, he knew. And it's and it was all planned out by God, and that's an amazing thing. And so I encourage I encourage everybody that to not just – if God can raise up Pharaoh so that he can show his power, and certainly God used um, Gentile, Gentile kings – he had his people influence those kings. They might not have been the most moral people. You know, I don't think anybody wants Joe Biden or uh, Donald Trump to come in and teach their Sunday school class. That's right. And and so nobody's saying that either one of them are nobody's are serious. Yeah, they're not. They're not their savior. <laughs> right. Uh, and and so we want to point people to the savior, but at the same time, God can use whoever He wants, and He can use His people to influence those people. You look at you look at Daniel. They took him out of his country, changed his name. Changed his language, but there were some things that Daniel wouldn't change. He That's said, right. I'm not going to defile God. Uh, you know, and he second, wouldn't eat the king's de- delicacies. Second Kings 5, Naaman. God, it, got, it says in Second Kings 5 that God used Naaman of Syria to, to bring wrath or punishment upon Israel. Yeah. You know, this Naaman, this leper, captures his servant girl. She comes back, right? She comes back. She's a captive, and she says, "You, you know, I, I'm, I could, I could fuss and complain and belly ache about my situation, but she says, hey, I, I need you to tell you about the prophet that's in Israel.' I got somebody to tell you about. If he would go to Samaria, we could fix this leprosy problem. She didn't fuss and belly. I mean, like, you think she had something to fuss? You know, not only has she been captive, but she's a slave now. That's right. She's been put to work. And so, you know, no, no, no. She says, let me tell you about it. So you get you get lepers coming into Israel, right? You get these lepers coming into Israel, Naaman, and then one chapter later in, in 2 Kings 6 is where they're fleeing. You remember that? They flee from them, and the lepers are outside. You know, this is where the the selling the dung, the, the dove droppings, yeah, and dove the donkey's head, and yeah. all this, that, and the other. And Elijah tells the guy, the captain of the guard watching the gate, he says, you just wait. By this time tomorrow, you'll be giving it away. It's going to be such a big deal. Well, those, those, uh, those um, lepers there... God decides that he's going to send this, you know, um, noise through the camp, and they think it's the Egyptians. They say they've hired the kings of the Egyptians and the Hittites to come after us. They take off, and this, and these lepers that are guarding the door, they go out into the camp, and they find all this stuff, and they say, you know what? This ain't the right thing. We need to do the right thing. We need to return and tell them. So they go back, and they tell them, and the king is so convinced that he's like, no, nah, it's a trap. So he sends horsemen out. He says, go, go see if you can find them. And, and, and as they go on the road, they find all the stuff. they just thrown aside because they're just running away in such haste. And so at the end of the day, you know, four lepers come into Israel because God chose it, and four lepers were part of Israel's Savior. Mm-hmm. And so God can raise up and do whatever he wants to. That's right. And, and you, look at, you look at people like Nebuchadnezzar that placed Daniel you know, Nebuchadnezzar, there was, there was nothing Christian about him. There was, oh. Or nothing Hebrew about nothing. He wasn't godly. Yeah. And uh, and so, but but he raises, God uses the power of Daniel and prophesied about the church in Daniel 2. And and we see where, where, where Daniel is placed in this position of authority over the astrologers and the magicians. And, and you know what's pretty cool? And uh, we could probably, I guess this could be a whole different tangent, but... 
about 400, I guess four or 500 years later when Christ steps foot, that fullness of time, when he steps foot on the earth as a baby and he's born, you know, the wise men came to see him. And they were from the where? Oh, that's right. They were from the east. And it's like, we don't know what exactly what town they were from, but they said we've we've seen his star. How would how would how would some magician how would some astrologer know about the star of Christ? Uh, go back four or five hundred years right. when Daniel two. Yeah, when when God's people were taking over, a lot worse situation than what America's in. But God was setting up all these things, and now these guys. These guys, when Daniel's placed in charge of them, what do you think Daniel taught them? That's right. He taught them about the star of David, talking about the That's star right. of Jesus. And and so, hey, we've seen a star. Well, then you look at you look at Joseph and how he he changed the, the Pharaoh's mind, and Joseph placed second in command. And so there's there and was victorious. Yeah, you never know what God's going to use. I mean, he changed Egypt. That's right. You know, I mean, through through diplomatic means, really. And so there, there's just, I mean, like over and over again. You know, there's just so much of a blessing for us to. What happens is we get stuck right now. Yeah. And so when we start down the political fuss and fight and and throwing mud at everybody, you know what we do? We draw people's eyes away from heaven Mm -hmm. and put it back on this place, and it's going to burn. I mean, like everything that you see, everything you can touch, it's all going to be gone one day, period. Yeah. You built this beautiful table. We built it. And uh, okay, you built it. I drilled like seven holes. Well, that was still a wee. Yeah, I marked the holes. Right, <laughs> with exactly. calipers. Exactly. I showed up, and you and Jerry had already made this. The whole platform, the top, it was all finished. All I did was help put on the little. You diamond. come up with a really good idea for how to cut the the diamond blade. One. That's fine. One idea. Yeah, but it still took one. <laughs> yeah. You know, but but here's the thing: is that. Yeah, it's going to burn. It's going to burn, and so it really boils down to your view of one thing. Are you eternal or not? That's right. Do do you really think? Now, I'm not saying that we should throw caution to the wind and just let the chips fall where they may, because, you know, God has put us in in America to be part of this this nation, and certainly we should exercise everything that we can. I mean, Nathan goes to David— Right when David sins, because mm-hmm. he was in a position to do that. That's right. And so it's not that it's you know Isaiah one. He says you know you that are you who have the power to not oppress, don't oppress. And yeah. and so it's not that it's not that when you have a uh, the ability, whatever that is, whatever your ability is, you know, whatever your privilege for us as Americans to vote, vote. Yeah. Get out and do it. What did do you, you th- vote? I did. I did too. I only got a pen. Yep, I got a pen and a sticker. They like yours more than mine, I suppose. Right. I voted. I voted better than you did. Yeah, more somebody, efficient. Yeah, well, maybe it's because I took so long. But you know what? <laughs> uh, so we voted the same precinct, I think, out there at the community center. Yep. Um, did in you sunrise. see? The, did, did you get to go up to the front of the line? I did. See that that gets that crazy. I stood in line for forty five minutes. <laughs> I got there, and the line was wrapped all the way around to the ball field. And this old country boy comes out there. He said, A through F. I said, I said What's, what you mean? He said, what's your last name? I said, Donovan. He said, go on up there. And I walked up there. Everybody looked at me like, what's that boy doing? Yeah. He cut line. You know, that big boy's ever cut line. Yeah. And they had no idea. So I just zipped on in there, cast my vote. That's why I only got a pen, I reckon. Maybe you got a sticker for waiting. Because I had to wait 45 minutes. Yeah, they felt bad for yeah, you. They, they changed it to A through L later, which it wasn't too bad. It wasn't but half the the line back on the softball field. And he said, yeah, this ain't no line. It was wrapped all the way around that softball field this morning. Yeah. and uh, But, yeah, just record norm- numbers people turn out. But, yeah, we're going to vote. I'm going to do these things and going to try to make a difference. But truly where you make a difference, it's not it's not sounding the horn on every political view that you have. It's, I mean, make a difference in your children. Make a difference in your friends. And point them to Jesus. Mm-hmm. Because at the end of this age, I mean – America's a great nation, but Rome once was too. That's right. And the um, I had a guy text me. And I don't think there's two more patriotic guys than they're sitting here right now. Yeah, I mean, and I'm not saying, and, and I just want to make sure, I mean, like, my boys are Liam Patrick Henry. Who's that? <laughs> I mean, give me liberty or give me death. You right. know what I mean? Like, like so, so they're named after Virginia's first governor. And so, I, I mean, like, patriotism, 
it's 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 in my G and, uh, DNA. And I mean, I got a boy that texted me. I don't know if he's watching or not, but he texted me right before we started, and I wanted to chat. I said, hey, "I'm gonna jump on this podcast." And and I was thinking about this. Hey, we used to play. All of us used to play football together, and um, we had this game. We we play football. We play tackle football. And I, I may have told you this story before. Go or hardcore. Yes, that's right. And uh, we didn't play touch. And <laughs> but we, you know, you also used it just for the you know uh, a time to be rough. Oh too. yeah, I'm gonna hammer somebody. <laughs> hammer somebody. Bam! Right, right. And the but the so we used to play football, and we had this rule where you could. If you slipped on a cow pie, you could spot the ball and no loss of downs. <laughs> on a cow patty? On a cow patty. <laughs> and so For those of you that don't know, that is cow poop. <laughs> right. And so and you know that stuff is slick. Yeah. Right? So y'all playing out in the cow pasture. Yeah, we're playing in the pasture. And uh so if you slipped on it, slipped on it. You spotted a ball, no loss of downs. Well, then everybody got to where, you know, you kind of, you know, all of us are around this stuff all the time. So when you were going to get tackled, guess what you would do? They would run towards the cow patty. Run towards it. And, 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 you know, they would dive on it. You know uh, what I'm saying? And what better picture of politics is than that? You don't care what you get on you. You don't care what kind of mess you get into. Yeah. You don't care. I mean, you know, if it's on you, it's going to be on the next guy too. It's all over the ball at that point. Yeah. And so you don't care what kind of mess you're in. You just want to win. And that's what it boiled down to. That was a tactic they could use to win. Didn't care how messy they got or how bad they stunk. They just wanted to win. And we just got to remember that that's what – this is just Satan's device. That's you know, right. It, the, the God gives us this privilege. It's just like Paul said, all things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. So you can do – everything that you want to do, it, there's a context in which you can do it in. You just you just come up with anything. Killing, murder, sex, drugs. Uh, there's there's a million uses. I mean, like every time you drink Nyquil, it's full of alcohol. But if you sit down and drink 19 bottles of it, you've certainly done. You certainly misused it, right? Sure. And so the you know politics is the same way. It's it's a it's something that we should be participating in, but not let something that is. It shouldn't run my life. It shouldn't run my life. And it shouldn't ruin my life. And it shouldn't ruin your day. And. You know, there's a lot of people today who are really upset, and they're saying, "Well, they're cheating on the ballots. There, 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 there's these votes that are coming in, and certainly there's there's videos that I've watched where, uh, I, you know, I'm I used to be pretty naive, and I used to think that people were very honest about things, but really and truly, they're not. And people will they will lie, steal, and lie, steal, and cheat to to get their way up to the to the top. Do whatever it takes." But a lot of people are really upset, and they're saying, you know what? These people are stealing. They're cheating. They're hijacking this election and things. But you know what? Getting drunk, homosexuality, sleeping with somebody outside of marriage, committing adultery, all those things, they're just as, they're just as bad in God's eyes. And a pollution on society. Yeah. I mean, every one of those things contribute to the to the degradation of society. And so you just got to ask yourself this one question. Are you an exile or a native? Yeah. I Amen. mean, you know, in, in 1 Peter 2, in verse number 11, Peter uses this, this terminology. Beloved, I beg you. You know, Paul used it in Romans 12, I beseech you. You know, there's this imploring. By the mercies of God, right? yeah. You know, this is just like imploring, right? Yeah. I can't, I can't, Jesus used to say, verily, verily, I say unto you. Yeah, Most I mean, assuredly. Yeah, yeah, like I'm trying to use the strongest language that I can use to get you to understand yeah. this thing. Almost today would be like patriots, yes. fellow Americans. I, I, I beg you, he says, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims. He's talking to the church. Right. He's not talking to the world here. Anything after the book of Acts is written to us. Mm-hmm. It's written to Christians. So he says, Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust, which war, what, Bob? Against you, against the soul. You, you know, like you think about this, this is like a, we when if you just took this verse and just plopped it on the, you know, this was a bulletin board verse. You'd think you could start, you could stack underneath it Galatians five type things, right? The works of the flesh are manifest, and you know all these different things, and go through, you know, some of these lasciviousness, adultery, for all these different things. But no, 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 that's not what Peter says. He goes on and gives us a list. He says, "You abstain from fleshly lust, which war against your soul, having your here, here he even he even starts to outline it." having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they 
speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they observe, glorify God in the day of visitation. Therefore, what's it there for? I always say that. Said all that to say this. I say all that to say this. I'm saying all these things to say this. Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man. Why? It's for the Lord's sake. Because you're an exile. You're not a native. That's right. And you did such a good job with that sermon the other day that I just I really wanted our our people and our podcast nation to to just hear it. And that's the fact that you know we don't. I was born and raised in America, and I plan to live here my whole life. Plan to raise my children, am raising my children, and hope to see my grandchildren raised here, and hope that this place is better than than what I left it at. But this ain't my home. It's not my home, and. And yeah, that's one importance that I've placed with my kids is, you know, I really deep down I want them to have roots. I mean, I can, I can still see the tree limbs of the the sugar maples that I used to climb in my parents' backyard, and I mean I can sit, picture them in my mind, and and just everything about about you know home and every everything about about the neighborhood back behind and certainly I can remember getting whippings. I remember uh, <laughs> you know just. I remember the window. We we one time we had thirteen window panes broke out of our <laughs> broke out of our house. Daddy got to where he quit he quit replacing glass. You know there was three boys raised up there, and and uh, but there was nothing special. One thing that that my parents taught me so well was just being content. And you know I literally never saw one piece of new furniture roll through the one one new couch roll through. I remember Dad getting a new recliner. But uh, the same entertainment center, same same old TVs, and mom, my mama, and I'm sure there's people who are worse off. But you know, I was raised, born in in the '80s, and but I can remember, you know, I see all these new houses today. But my mama had her washer and dryer in her in her in her kitchen with her <laughs> growing up, and she we literally she'd put a sheet over washer and dryer when when company come when over, company come over, <laughs> right. and we'd put it on. We're like, don't. Don't knock this sheet off. You know, she'd be like, "Boys, don't get so rough and knock this sheet off and knock off all this, <laughs> all this nice stuff." You know, but uh, break the plates. But you know, so I, I've always wanted to put roots with my children. But we lived in different houses. I think Carson lived in probably nine different houses. But I want his roots to be in Christ, be dug in so deep that it doesn't matter where you live in this world. That it, it's it's not our home. It's not our. It may be where I'm dwelling. But that's what Peter's saying. He's saying you're sojourners, and this is you're just passing through this place. Life's just a vapor, and and you know the deeper the roots, the richer the vein. Yeah, and so the 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 stronger, the deeper you, you get this in your mind that this is not my home. It should it should motivate you because if you really realize, if you really believe that Paul said in Philippians 3 that my citizenship is not in heaven I mean it's not on this earth but I'm a citizen of the kingdom and we have a heavenly citizenship if yeah. you really believe that then then it should change the way that you view politics everything changes everything absolutely and you know there's a and that's what the fact that I can glorify God it allows me to submit to those ordinances of man I suppose that the Lord could have, he could have created the most, you you think about this, all these Christians that go to the, you know, Peter writes this, submit yourself to every ordinance of the governors of those who are sent by him, to the kings, whether to the king supreme, he writes this during Nero's reign. If history's correct, Nero's the one that essentially is crucifies Peter upside down. Yeah. He writes that during this time and says, submit to him. So I suppose and, and so you got all these Christians that are going to go to their grave in the first century for the cause of martyrdom, for the cause of Christ. So you know they're dedicated. I suppose they could have rose up in revolt. Oh yeah. I mean, Jesus could have created the greatest army that ever was. And that's why when Pilate says, Are you a king? He says, You 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 don't understand. If if I were a king if I were a king, you see, because I'm going to be such a strong leader, I'm going to have so much power that if I were the king that you're thinking about, the citizens of this world, they'd fight for me. Yeah. Yeah, he said, hey, my kingdom's not of this world, Pilate. But it's not here. <laughs> if it was of this world, buddy, you wouldn't be in existence right now. Exactly right. And that's why you, he even tells him. He doesn't say it like haughty or disrespectful. He's like, you don't you don't really have power. You just got what God's given you. Yeah, I can imagine um, – Peter walking in, those disciples walking in, 
to, to Jerusalem that day, the week before Jesus' death, and, and they're just thinking, man, we're following King Jesus. He's fixing to light this place up. You know, they're thinking it's, a, it's an earthly kingdom. And so many times we can think about, I mean, you look at in Romans, I mean, in Acts chapter 1, and they're like, Lord, are you now going to restore the kingdom to Israel? And he's like, y'all been with me for three all years. All this time. All this time, and you still don't understand You've this. still been on this Israel thing. Yeah, and, and so, you know, it, you can see that they struggled with it. Right, I mean, Peter. I struggle with it. We all do. We all do. Yeah. And, and so, I'm, uh, sorry, I cut you off. Well, that's that's when I, uh, you you made my point for me. And this is not, this is not a condemnation. This is just a commendation. Just to remember that we are not natives here, and the devil wins when we think that we're doing a good service, because you know what he wants you to do. He just wants you to be happy. He wants you to be happy with whatever you do, content or 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 or. or thinking that you're doing the right thing. He doesn't care about your situation or anything like that. He just wants you to think that you're doing the right thing. And so the longer we spend time getting people's focus on this world instead of off eternity, he's winning. Yep. I pray that, that this uh, that this election, however it comes about, and of course, it could have it turned over while we're sitting here setting this podcast up. I don't know. It doesn't matter to me. All I pray is, is that, is that it turns people, it turns people back to God, and I'm so thankful to see people praying. But and and I it, I was I was pretty happy to see some things on election day. People asking people to pray for our nation and that type of thing. But there's there's one thing I, I was thinking about this in James four, just back a couple of pages in our Bibles. That in James four and verse one, he's like, "Where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members?" And, and so many times that, that our, our fighting, I want to fight for my colors. You know, I may want to fight for the blue or the red. I made sure that I wore red, white, and blue on, on voting day just to, because it was, it's, I want to be patriotic. And, and I, I don't want to, I don't want to draw party lines in, in a, in a voting line, but I want to point people back to remembering that, that we should all be unified. But he's saying, where do these fights come from among, they come for your desires, from your desires, you know, for your own pleasures. And they war in your members among you. That's the church. It also wars in, in among you think about we're, all of our fights with our with our spouse. It comes from my own desire for my own pleasure, the things that, that I want. But he says, You lust and do not have, you murder and covet and cannot obtain, you fight and war, yet you do not have because you do not ask. He says, You you ask and do not receive. It's like, well, I'm praying to God that this will happen. You ask and do not receive. Because you ask amiss that you may spend it on your pleasures. And the fact that God doesn't just want to hear from us whenever I want to vote, whenever I want a political way to go my way. That's right. And and so and, and he, he's very clear and illustrating there. The reason why you don't get what you want is because you're in it for your own selfish benefit. That's right. And so which, which the, the prayer that we should really be understanding is that, Lord, just like when Jesus, if we could just get this one thing Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. If we could just understand that one thing, I mean, how much would it change our lives? That now all of a sudden, whenever things bad, whenever bad things happen in my eyes, I just got to realize that I'm a pawn. I'm just an exile. And I'm just here for a little while. And, and I've got to do the best that I can do. I'm going to sow seeds. I'm going to try to influence as many people. I'm going to try to love as many people. I'm going to try to serve as many people as I can. And that way, when it's all said and done, all I can say is that, Lord, I'm an unfaithful and unprofitable servant. Luke seventeen ten. Yeah, absolutely. I just, I just can't help but think that, you know, so many times we just want to be a friend of the world. It's, it's, you know, why? Because it seems so appealing for us. You, you know, if if there's anything that you know. I was with a brother this morning in the church, and we were talking about this in generality. And, you know, if there's anything that this election has taught me is that the more of the world that talks about it and wants to put their hand in a cookie jar, the less I should stay away from it. I mean, the more I should stay away from yeah. it. Because I know that the majority is not going to make it to heaven. Mm. That's what my Lord said. Yeah. And so the more the world wants to do something, the the more I better keep away from it. And, and that, you know, it, Peter says again, he says, listen, for, 
For this is the will of God, that by doing good you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men. What he's wanting you to do is validate Christianity. You know, you could stand up and you could say, well, Jesus is my king. Well, that's true. Or, or I have no king but Jesus or, or whatever. I mean, that's what the Pharisees tried to use against him, right? He says he tries to make himself a king. No, 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 no. no that's not what he was doing at all. And Jesus, you, you, Peter says, don't use your, not using liberty as a cloak for vice, but as what? Bond servants. You, you've, just, you've just allowed yourself to be remembered that you're a subject here. Mm-hmm. So you just submit. You just do what they need to tell you to do. And so, like you had this this powwow, you know, the other when you preached this lesson a couple of weeks ago about the burn ban thing. Yeah. And you know, I thought about that and thought about that, and like you did such a good job with it, and and just right down to the fact that you know you could burn trash. You could burn trash, and I remember a time, but you decided not to because you wanted to respect authority. You wanted to to submit. To yeah. authority. And kind of for those who, who don't know what was happening, we uh, we had a, a law that came down when COVID first came down, and this was right right at the hinge of, of the times with the, with everything that was going on um, in, in our world with all kinds of racial things. And, and the mayor of Petal had made comments that I disagreed with, that I preached against. And, uh, and when he was talking about, you know, the – What's I went blank. Who's the guy that that died on the streets up there in Minnesota? George Floyd. Yeah, and George Floyd. And so he made bad comments about George Floyd, whatever. And so the same guy who I disagreed with puts out an ordinance that says um, you can't you can't have you can't burn. And so you couldn't have you couldn't roast marshmallows with your kids in the backyard. And so that month, our characteristic at church was obey all the way. And I was so mad at you, Chris Donovan. <laughs> it's like we had to program that this month, but it was it was just for God, and and so we had we had, Courtney and I made the decision that if we decide today that we're going to burn a fire in our backyard with our children, that it would set it would engrave and set things and and engrave it whatever you want to call it, sear it into our children's mind that. It doesn't matter. You can you can do whatever you want, whenever you want. But the fact that we we love God so much, we're going to obey those people who are in authority, and and so, man, that, that's just one time I've got it right. But I've messed it up so many other times. Yeah, but you, but you did the right thing because you know your kids are whatever you do, they're going to take it one step further. I hope so. You no, know, I'm saying like in wrong. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I'm saying in right. I hope that that they'll take it one step further than I did when I do something right. But I'm saying in wrong. You know, so if you you do a little bit of wrong, you know, what it does is it gets them comfortable with it. Yeah. And so what everybody does, they want to – that's why your kids, when you're going to tell them no and, like, they'll do this deal. Like, don't touch it. And they're like Mm – hmm They want to know how far they can go. And so, you know, you you did the right thing. And that's why Peter says, listen, don't use your liberty. You know, you're free from all this stuff in the world. All the problems that the world has, you don't have those things. You don't. You're 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 not bound by those. What you do is when you when you start concerning yourself with this world's problems again, you've shackled yourself to it again. You've taken the thing that 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 unchanged you from the world, the blood of Jesus, and you cast it aside. Yeah, you, know, you you have Hebrews ten twenty six. You when you sin willfully. Yeah, after you receive the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice for sins, and so that's why he says, listen. At the end of the day, honor all people. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the king. Native or exile. How you live your life tells a tale. Whoever wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Amen.